Hi, this is Gabe from FluentForever.com. At this point, we've gone through all the sounds of European Portuguese. If you're using one of my pronunciation trainers, it's going to take you through all of these sounds, train your ears to hear them more accurately, and teach you the spellings that produce them. Then it'll push all of that data into your long-term memory. And if you're not, that's fine too. I made these videos to give you a passing familiarity with all the sounds of Portuguese, so that when you study them in depth, they're going to feel more familiar. That'll make them easier to learn. In either case, I want to cover a handful of important Portuguese spelling rules before we finish, because they're the rules that require just a touch of explanation, rather than straight memorization. We'll start by talking about when to pronounce voiced or unvoiced S and Z. We'll chat about the letter R, and then we'll talk about word stress. So let's get started with the letters S and Z. These two letters are tricky because both of them are sometimes pronounced S or SH, that is to say unvoiced, and sometimes pronounced Z or Z. They're both voiced. We'll start with the letter S. S sounds just the way you'd expect in all the following situations. In the beginning of a word. Like in sino. At the beginning of a syllable after a consonant. Like in bolsa. Or whenever you see two S's in a row. Like in osso. The one case in which you're going to switch over to a voiced Z sound is when you see a lone S in between two vowels. That gives you words like asa and rosa. But that's not every sound the S can make. While we've covered the unvoiced S and the voiced Z sounds, the letter S can have two additional sounds, the unvoiced SH and the voiced J. We'll start with the unvoiced SH. This sound can show up in two situations. One at the end of a word. Like in limões. Or whenever an S is at the end of a syllable, and the consonant after that S is unvoiced. These unvoiced sounds are K, F, P, or T. This gives you words like pescoço. And as you might expect, in that second scenario, if the next consonant is voiced, then something else happens. You get a voiced J sound. That gives you words like esboço or lesme. Now let's switch over to the letter Z. Z is generally going to give you the voiced Z sound that you'd expect whenever it shows up in the beginning of a word. Like in zebra. Or in the middle of a word. Like in cinza. But at the ends of words, if you see a Z, you're going to make an unvoiced SH sound. That gives you words like nariz and raiz. While we're talking about S and Z, I'll throw in a quick note about the letter X. X is a bit of an unpredictable pain in Portuguese. There is one rule that it does seem to follow. There is one rule that it does seem to follow, which is that when it shows up in between two vowels at the beginning of a word, it sounds like z. Giving you words like izibir and izem. But aside from that, you just need to memorize X words individually. Since it can sound like sh, as in xilophone, s, as in massimo, and x, as in taxi. The main saving grace of X is that it's one of the least used letters in the language. Moving on, our next stop is the letter R. Back in the first video, we briefly mentioned some rules regarding R. I just wanted to expand a bit on those. So, starting with the R tap, R. That sound generally shows up in a couple of places. When the letter R is preceded by a consonant and followed by a vowel, as in trigo, when a single R shows up in between two vowels, as in morango, or caro. And at the ends of words or syllables. As in mar. Any other times you see an R in a word, it'll be pronounced as a uvular R. So you'll hear that uvular R sound at the beginnings of words. As in rato. In the middle of words, when that R is doubled. As in carro and burro. And whenever an R shows up after an L, an S, or an N. Giving you words like Melhu, Israel, and Honra. And with that, we're on to our last topic, word stress. In English, a stressed syllable can entirely change the meaning of a word. We have, for instance, incense and incense. Stress is just as important in Portuguese, but fortunately, figuring out which syllable to stress is a lot more predictable in Portuguese than it is in English. Here are the rules. Rule 1. If a word has a vowel with a diacritic or an accent mark on it, then that syllable is going to be stressed. So if you see an acute accent, 
like in fácil, or a circumflex accent, as in lâmpada, or even one of those little nasal tilde things, as in coração. In all of those cases, you stress the syllable with the diacritic. The only exception to this is what you do when you see a word with two diacritics. It's rare, but it does happen. In words like órgão, in those cases, the acute accent always wins. So it's órgão and not órgão. Next up is rule two. If a word ends in I, L, R, U, or Z, then the stress is going to be on the last syllable. That gives you words like senti, canal, trabalhar, caiu, and feliz. The only exceptions here are when rule one applies, meaning that you encounter a vowel diacritic, as in útil or júri. Rule one is basically stronger than rule two. And that leaves us with rule three, which covers the rest of Portuguese words. If you see a word that doesn't have a vowel diacritic and doesn't end in I, L, R, U, or Z, then generally, more than 70% of the time, you're going to stress the second to last syllable. Giving you words like mesa, cadeira, and aventureiro. And with that, we are through with word stress. Before we finish completely, I wanted to briefly mention a couple of important spots in Portuguese pronunciation where there really aren't spelling rules. These are moments where you just need to memorize word pronunciation individually. And those spots are whenever you're dealing with a stressed E or O vowel that doesn't have any diacritics on it. For E, that means words like vela and selo. In the spelling, all you see is an E, and pretty much the only way to know whether the vowel is an open E or a closed E is to look it up in a dictionary or find a recording at forvo.com. Same idea for the letter O. Those are cases like roda and olho. There's nothing in the spelling telling you whether it's an open O or a closed O. You just have to look it up. With that out of the way, we can quickly review what we covered in this video. We started by discussing the spelling rules that affect S and Z. S basically sounds like an S, s most of the time, when it's at the beginning of syllables. In words like sino, bolsa, and osso. But when you see a single S in between two vowels, it's going to sound like a Z, z. As in rosa. The letter S can also have two other sounds, the unvoiced sh and the voiced zh. So the unvoiced sh can appear in two situations. First, at the end of a word, like in limões, and at the end of a syllable before an unvoiced consonant, like k, f, p, or t. Like in pescoço. The letter S can also sound like the voiced zh at the end of a syllable when the consonant afterwards is also voiced. As in lesma. As for Z, it sounds like a Z, Z. As in zebra. Most of the time. But when it shows up at the ends of words, it turns into an S, a S sound. As in nariz. In this section, we also mentioned how X is generally unpredictable, following only one rule where, if it shows up in between two vowels at the beginning of a word, it sounds like a Z. As in izem. But in other spots, it can be sh, s, or x. As in xilophone, máximo, and taxi. After that, we went to the letter R. This letter sounds like an R tap, r, following most consonants, in between two vowels or at the ends of words or syllables. As in trigo, morango, or mar. But in other spots, it sounds like a uvular R, r, specifically at the beginnings of words. As in rato. In the middle of words, whenever you see two R's in a row. As in carro. And whenever an R shows up after an L, an S, or an N. As in Melru, Israel, and Honra. Finally, we went to word stress, which generally followed three rules. Rule one, you stress any vowel with a diacritic on it. As in fácil, lâmpada, coração. Unless you have two diacritics in a word, in which case the acute accent wins. As in órgão. Rule two, you stress the final syllable in words ending with I, L, R, U, or Z. As in senti, canal, trabalhar, caiu, and feliz. Unless you see a diacritic. In that case, rule one wins. And last, rule three, 
which basically says that if rules one and two don't apply, then 70% of the time you'll stress the second to last syllable. As in mesa and cadeira. Finally, we briefly mentioned that stressed E's and O's without any diacritics in Portuguese are unpredictable. You'll need to look up whether the vowels are in E, E, O, or O. And that's all for our review, and we are done with Portuguese. If you need a hand in memorizing all of this stuff and training your ears to hear it, then grab a European Portuguese trainer from my website, linked below. You'll have all of this memorized within a couple of weeks. I'll see you next time.